We have loads of seriously cool VR news to get through in this episode, including three almost new unbelievably good headsets and a new tool for creative VR users, multiple games that Oculus has unceremoniously killed off, more games that have just launched or are about to be launched, the monetization of social VR and some amazing news for flight simulator fans. Keep watching to get the full story. What's up guys, my name's Keith and this is Quick News from VR Linked. Are you a creative type of person or do you like to draw and paint in VR? Well then this first slot is for you. Wacom have announced that their new device called the Wacom VR Pen, original I know, but we're not here for the name are we? The device will allow users more control than they have ever had before when writing or drawing in VR. With a pressure sensitive button near the tip, users will be able to control naturally the stroke thickness while the rotator knob on top will allow users to control menus etc. This looks exciting and could revolutionize the way we currently create in VR. Not much is known about tracking yet, but it seems to be a proprietary system that will hopefully work with a lot of different headsets. It looks great and I would love to know what VR creatives think about this product. Let me know your thoughts in the comment guys, I really want to hear about them. Some bad news for the owners of Marvel Powers Unite VR, Ripcoil and VR Sports Challenge, as it looks like these games are being basically shut down. All three titles have been removed from sale and in the case of Marvel Powers Unite and Ripcoil, current owners will only be able to continue playing until March 1st, 2021. After this, the games will become inaccessible and unplayable with Oculus saying users should delete the games before that date to avoid having the games take up dead space on their devices. If you own any of these games, it's important to note that you can get a refund if purchased within 6 months of the refund request, but not if your purchase was before this time frame. Also, it's important to note that according to Oculus, VR Sports Challenge will continue to be playable indefinitely by owners after it has been removed from sale. What are your thoughts on this? I mean, I know it's hard to keep what are in fairness unpopular games going, but I just don't know whether I can agree with taking away access to the single player elements of a game from a user who has paid. Like, it's a tough call, and it's not all on Oculus either. Sanzaru game devs have a lot of hand in creating this situation as well. What's your take on it? Hit me up in the comments and discuss, and look, stick around for the three new high-end headsets revealed this past week. Hey guys, just quickly, I would like to say that I would appreciate it if you could share this video and get the channel out there to the community. And also, if you wouldn't mind, hit like, and if you like the content, hit maybe subscribe and the bell button. Um, now, back to the news. Two of the major VR social apps are making strides for monetization this week, with VRChat introducing VRChat Plus and Rec Room clearing the way for users to create a virtual marketplace to trade content for in-game tokens. I'll come back to VRChat Plus in a minute, but first, let's look at Rec Room's new fledgling economy. The new Tokens for Content system is available to those who are already paying for the Rec Room Plus membership, which costs $8 a month and gives the user 6,000 tokens among other benefits. Sellable items include things like weapons and avatar outfits along with furniture etc and can be sold from anywhere between 500 to 10,000 tokens at present. There's no way to convert these tokens to real world cash right now, but it is something the developers have said they were working on. VRChat Plus has just launched on Steam with other platforms coming later and you can get a one month subscription for $9.99 or a yearly membership for $99.99. .99. And this will get you custom user icons, a support badge, more avatar slots and increased trust. I see this as more a way to support VR chat than something that gets you anything real or useful. So if you like the platform, sure, go ahead and get it, but it's not necessarily for most users. What are your thoughts on this subscription economy based monetization strategy? Are this something you agree with or do you see them as expensive, unnecessary and even off putting? Huge hardware news this week with the announcement of not one, not two, but three major new headsets. Well, kinda, let's call it two and a half. First out of the gate is Pimax. If you are interested in VR, which I assume you are, I mean, otherwise, why would you be here? You will probably have heard of Pimax, the wide field of view PC VR headsets. They've just launched a new Pimax 5K Super, and it seems to be a hardware refresh on the Pimax 5K Plus and sport the not inconsequential $750 price tag. It has the same resolution and field of view as the Plus, but has a much higher refresh rate with up to 180 Hz available in experimental mode. 
It has a new audio strap, facial interface and exterior casing, but the main draw is those refresh rates that should equate to some buttery smooth experiences, assuming you have the hardware to run it. Next up are the two headsets from Vario, the VR3 and XR3. Vario is probably best known as an extremely high-end headset company and it should come as no surprise that these headsets definitely fall into that category. A $299 Quest 2, these are not. The VR3 and XR3 come in at a staggering $4,000 and $7,000 respectively and this is actually budget compared to Vario's usual prices. Just let that sink in for a moment. But what do you get for all this money? Well, you get headsets and a required annual subscription. But how could these possibly be worth that much, I hear you say? To be honest, I don't know that they are. But I have to say the screenshots I've seen look pretty impressive to me. And the figures are impressive as well, with Vario offering 9.7 megapixels per eye, almost three times that of Quest 2, compared to the approximately 50% bump from Quest to Quest 2. And you might get some idea of how clear these headsets are going to be. Also, both come with eye tracking and automatic IPD adjustment along with hand tracking from Ultraleap. So far, I've been talking of these though they're both the same headset, but the more expensive XR3 comes with AR capabilities on top of its VR abilities. Its high quality pass through cameras and sensors allow the headset to make the outside world a high quality wide field of view augmented reality with full opacity control and that's pretty awesome. The cameras combined with onboard lidar are going to make for an incredible AR experience. Like I'm completely blown away by these specs and will be jumping at the opportunity to use one of these if I'm ever presented with one. But seeing as they're focused on enterprise I'll probably never even see one in person let alone get to use one. What do you think of these headsets? Amazing or too far out of the average consumer's reach? Do you think we'll ever see something like this available at an affordable or even high-end prosumer price range? On to PlaySpace, the game dedicated section of VR linked quick news. First up is news that it appears that Half-Life Alex is after surpassing 2 million in sales. An incredible figure, but in the world of gaming still very, very small. I have to say I love that VR is growing, but just wish it would grow just a little faster. Also this past week, Microsoft announced that they will be releasing an update on their new flight simulator. That will allow all major PC VR headsets to work with the simulator. This is great news as many expected the initial VR support to be only available on the HP Reverb G2 which is a Windows Mixed Reality headset. You better have a beefy rig though as Flight Simulator 2020 has been pushing some pretty impressive PCs to the limit and still not achieving the high frame rates necessary for comfortable PC VR. Hopefully the devs have done some work behind the scenes to help this along though. Contractors, the multiplayer shooter has launched on Oculus Quest and looks great. It has been available on PC VR for the past two years, but its appearance on the Quest Store is a welcome addition for standalone VR users. This looks like a pretty good port and will hopefully keep you all milsim nuts busy for the foreseeable future. Medal of Honor Above and Beyond is due to release next week. December the 11th to be exact, on both Oculus and Steam stores, and is the first such Oculus Studio game to do this. This past week saw us get a taste of what the multiplayer action is going to be like, with 5 game modes appearing in the new trailer. There looks to be something for every Medal of Honor fan there, and there will also be crossplay between Oculus and Steam players, and dedicated servers for private and co-op play. Couple this with bots that will fill empty player slots and hopefully we won't have too many empty lobbies or long waits for a game. Oh yeah, and let's not forget, there'll be a single player campaign mode also, the main game, which looks like incredible fun. Thanks for watching guys, if you liked the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up below and don't forget to hit the subscribe button and bell. Check out some of the other videos and live streams from the channel as well and I'll see you in the metaverse.